become interested in gerontology? Well, I did when I did my master's in social work, I focused on older women. I was always kind of interested in older women in health care and older women in illness, midlife and so forth. Um, and then when I went into my doctoral program, I was also interested in aging and I kind of pursued a dissertation in that. What started me in aging? I don't know. I just was always interested in older people. Yeah. Um, so describe your career trajectory as a gerontologist um, and at what point in your career did you embrace the term gerontologist to describe yourself? Interesting question. I started off, um, oh gosh, I guess when I was a medical social worker, then I was a medical social worker in England because I did graduate work in England and then I came back and I worked in substance abuse in Canada. and I. When we moved from Canada to the States, I did my MSW. That's when I started focusing more on aging. When I did my dissertation at Maryland, then it was definitely in terms of aging. I think when I finished at the University of Maryland and my first real faculty job was at San Jose State in the, um, we, didn't, we had like a gerontology department at San Jose State. And I was working there with some people in aging. I think that's when I began to really realize I was in aging. Um, did you have any female mentors who impacted your move into gerontology? Uh, the woman who I worked closely with at San Jose State, Bonnie Russell, was a very formidable person in terms of policy and aging and very involved in politics and aging at the national level. She was in the Reagan's government. She was on the council, Federal Council on Aging, so she was very, very involved in aging politics, very involved in policy development in California, uh, and just a phenomenal person. I mean, really, at the beginning from the 1960s, she had founded, or she was one of the founders, I believe, of Little House, which was the very first senior center in Palo Alto. So yeah, I think Bonnie was a really great mentor in terms of aging. Um, so what is unique about being a woman gerontologist? Women age different than men. Uh, women live life different than men. And I think that having the woman's perspective on aging throughout the life course is very unique. I think that, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to say it, most of the textbooks had been written by men who then assume what it's like to be a woman, and it ain't necessarily so. Uh, women's experiences of marriage, motherhood, caregiving are all very, very different than men. I think even the grandparent role is different for women than it is for men. So I think until you have the woman's perspective, you know, now of critical gerontology, it's very important to get the person's perspective on the whole experience. I think that's what women can do better, sort of the feminist perspective on aging. Okay, uh, and with that segue, how has being a gerontologist interacted with your own personal aging process? Interesting question. Um, you know, it's, you know things theoretically and it doesn't mean anything when it's in real life. For instance, when my father died and I'd been doing all this work on caregiving and then he was in California and I was in New York and he had a very long six month pretty bad illness of heart disease. What I knew theoretically did not necessarily help me as a caregiver. So I am always curious to know what is it you know about aging that actually impacts you in terms of your own experiences. Um, I did know how to advocate for him at the hospital. I really was able to advocate and I knew more about some of the things than, than his cardiologist did, put it that way. Uh, so in that way, professionally, it was an inter integration. I've done an awful lot of work in the last few years on grandparent caregivers. Uh, when I started the work, I didn't have any grandchildren. Now I have a three-year-old and a four-year-old. Um, am I a better grandmother having worked with grandparents? I don't think so. <laughs> My daughter certainly doesn't think so. Um, but, um, you know, again, it's sort of taking the knowledge in and integrating it into your own life as much as you can. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's fair. 
Um, the WIGL project focuses on the legacies of older women gerontologists. Um, so within that framework, is there anything else that you would like us to know? Anything you think is important? No, I think it's a very important project. I think that the whole feminine perspective needs to be emphasized and stressed. And I think uh, to understand more how women age, the roles that women take, the contributions that women make, and how we are definitely different than our male counterparts. I think that's really necessary. Too much theory has been based also upon men's experiences, which are not necessarily the same. It was, it was a really interesting time because they were bringing, for instance, a lot of baby formula to Africa. Mm -hmm. And because women in these villages even wanted to be modern, they didn't want to nurse the babies. But you're putting formula in a baby's mouth that has no sterilization or anything, so it's really unhealthy. So there was a lot of uh, papers we were writing about this, the importance of, say, nursing the baby for several months rather than doing the formula thing. Um, the UN, well, this was back in, when was I there, in the 70s. Uh, it's pretty patriarchal, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It was, but it was interesting work. And then uh, I worked in Canada in substance abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and that was also fascinating because that was in the time of the meth epidemic. And we were doing a lot of work of methamphetamine and people trying to come off of methamphetamine. Um, and I did some, that's when I really started doing some writing. I think my first articles were on speed use. And, and could you tell me more about the, the grandparent empowerment stuff that you did? Yeah, uh, that's still sort of ongoing. Um, I started that in 1998 in New York. Before that, I had always been working and fa with families where the, uh, the older person was the care receiver. When I moved up to Fordham, I started look, thinking, I was reading some stuff, and I realized, hey, wait a minute, there's a lot going on here, and there are actually grandparents who have taken over the role of raising grandchildren, and I got into, it was a very big deal, it still is a big deal in New York, um, and I got involved with some groups up in Harlem that were doing this, uh, I wrote a grant um, to New York Community Trust, mm -hmm. and you'll like this story, you know, it was, it was really competitive to get these grants, and they came out to the group, to the support group in Harlem, to do a site visit. And the fellow from the trust and, and a co-worker, and I never knew them, they didn't know me, they came up to Harlem. They came to our support group, and they sat there and they listened, and they listened to the grandparents talk about their stories and whatever. After about 40 minutes, this guy called me out and he said, I know you've asked only for whatever the amount of money was, he says, but I'd like to double that. Oh. Which that was right. really impressive. I mean, he was mm -hmm. so taken by it. And they funded it for three years, which was also unusual, because usually it's one year, maybe mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. And then after that ended, the city of New York City picked it up, and I had funding from them for, I think, 12 years. Oh, wow. So it only ended 2011, and that's when we had no money in the city. Mm -hmm. there's, there's just no money in there. But um, the project was ongoing. The grandparents, the empowerment curriculum was translated into Russian because we have Russian grandparents in Brighton Beach and we did it in Russian. I didn't do it, but I worked mm -hmm. with the facilitator. And into Spanish. And so I worked with her too. We did the whole thing in Spanish. So, yeah, it's, and I was just at a meeting the other day. They still talk about it. Do you think there's any possibility for that program to, um, to come leave back? New York? Yeah. Oh, well, it's been it's replicated in lots of places. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The curriculum is uh, available. Springer published the curriculum okay. a few years ago, and then I updated the curriculum. I have it online, so if anybody really wants it, they can have it. And I'm always surprised, like the, even here yesterday, today, people say, "Oh, I've got your curriculum." You know, oh. really. Good. Yeah, because it's very different than a support group. Mm -hmm. It's actually empowerment training. So it's not let's whine about what's happening. It's mm -hmm. what do you do with this kind of issue? How do you talk to the schools? How do you deal with the parents? How do you deal? How do you talk to the grandchildren about drugs or HIV and all mm -hmm. these other things? Mm -hmm. And you know, really kind of yeah, that's really important. Them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last question I have for you. Um, so there's a 
a lot of research that shows a link between depression and, and Alzheimer's development or dementia development. Um, there's also a lot of research that suggests a genetic link. Um, so if caregivers are often children of people with Alzheimer's... They're very worried about getting it. Right. So do you think... Are they, <laughs> are they more likely to get it because of the added stress of caregiving? Well, I don't know. We know there's a genetic link, right? right. right. Um, and anybody who has it in the family, an adult child, is always anxious. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I mean, it's, I don't know. Does the anxiety lead to it or is it the genetics? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, or also, is there any type of like um, protective factors that go into it? Like, oh, I know this could happen or here are some lifestyles that mom or dad had that I'm going to avoid. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just know that there's a lot of anxiety if people have it in the family. Yeah. Okay. Which is, you know, rightfully yeah. so, because there is a genetic link, but I mean...